Hey guys, what's up? Uh, Blue here. Before you watch this video, a little disclaimer. I made this video before the 14th week of the PPL because I actually forgot that the PPL was going to play a 14th week. I remember that PML and PCL had 13 weeks of play and I forgot that the PPL had 14 weeks. So I made this beforehand. So quick corrections. Uh, you're going to hear the wrong standings for two teams, which is Virtus Pro and Team Envy, and you're going to hear the wrong records for all the teams. So here's the updated records. Nada's Vincere finished 22-6 and six in first place. In second was Ninjas in Pajamas. They went 20-8 and eight after all. Uh, and Virtus Pro actually took third place, beating Envy in Week 14. So they finished 16-12 and 12 with a plus 14. And Team Envy finished in fourth place at 16-12 and 12 with a plus 10. 10. Space Station Gaming still finished fifth at 13 and 15. Pittsburgh Knights still in seventh with 11 and 17. Kanga Esports still finished in seventh with 10 and 18. And the Renegades, who I believe did not play in week 14, if I'm correct, finished four and 24 in eighth place. So just wanted to give the quick updates before you start watching this video because I'm going to say the wrong standings for each of them. And instead of going back and redoing all the graphics and re-recording the entire video, I'd rather just tell you right now in this because this was way easier, way faster. I'm tired, don't I look tired? Anyways, thanks, enjoy the video. Hey everyone, what's up? It's your boy Blue, and yes, it is that time of year. Finally, the World Championship for Paladins. Smite 2, but we're here to talk about Paladins. What's up everyone? It is your boy Blue, of course, as I stated before, and this is a breakdown video of all the teams that will be going to HRX. Now, if you're unfamiliar with HRX, it's High Res Expo, and that is the World Championship for Paladins and Smite, but we're here to talk about Paladins like I said, baby. Yeah. All right, so there's three different leagues. The PPL, which is Paladins Premier League. Those are the top PC players in the world. They play on land during the season, and then there's the PML, which is PC as well, but that's the Paladins Minor League. Those are the players that either don't have what it takes to be in the PPL as of right now, or maybe some players that were in the PPL and still need some development traits or some other things, uh, key things, you know, in their kits as a player right now. So they're not quite ready for the PPL. And then we have the PCL, which is the Paladins Console League. Now, there is cross-play across all platforms enabled for this. And PCL is only Xbox and, and uh, PS4. So maybe in 2020 there will be Switch. Who knows? Uh, so there will be cross-play for the tournament. Now, a little bit different system than they used last year. Last year there was a placement round beforehand at the Skillshot Studio. And then during HRX it was an 18 tournament. This time it still is an 18 tournament, but... Only three matches will be played at HRX, which is at DreamHack Atlanta, uh, November 15th through 17th, I believe, or November 16th. Yeah, 15th through 17th? Yeah, 15th through 17th. Sorry about that. Brain fart. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and break down all the teams that are going. Now, there are the top four seeds in the PPL standings already advanced to the World Championship bracket. The bottom four teams will be placed into the placement bracket. Now, there's also one team or two teams from the Paladins Minor League, one from North America and one from Europe. Then there's four teams from the Paladins Console League, one from each region, two from each console. So PS4 Europe has one team, PS4 North America, and the same with Xbox. So let's get right into it and... Let's see who wins. Now, before we go into this, this will not be a bracket breakdown. We're not gonna be talking about the bracket. That'll be the next video, so don't worry, that's coming. This is just a breakdown of all the teams. Uh, so there will be a console wars first, that's PS4 NA versus PS4 EU, and the winner of that faces the Xbox winner from Xbox NA and Xbox EU, right? Those two winners, if I'm correct, go to the placement bracket with the PC teams for the cross-play part of that. Uh, and they will have most likely have to play the uh, two PPL bottom PPL teams 
before trying to play the PML teams if they beat those PPL teams that they have to face. So let's go ahead uh, and get right into the breakdown. All right, so up first we have Hype Unit, which is your Xbox North American team. Now this team went 36-0 and in the phase two of the 2019 PCL season. And also they went 36-0 and in phase one of this season as well, just under the different name as Elevate. So basically this team's gone 72-0. and It's an incredible feat. Congratulations to them. Now they have made some changes. Uh, they will have Cool Matt as their sub and they will have Miracle as their coach. Miracle can also be known as Jeff the Raccoon if you're a fan of the PS4 side of things. Now, Miracle coming in as a coach is a really good move. I think that all of these players are talented, but with Miracle behind them, gets a little bit more in depth in that department. Cool Matt also coming in as the sub is a big pickup for them, and a lot of people are wondering why he's not already in the starting lineup. The reason why, let's take a look at their starting lineup. We have Trenzic coming in at the front line. Shu will be on support as always. Exodia will be on DPS, formerly known as Atomic Boom. You have Wonderful on the Flex 1 position and Emit Pain on the Flex 2 position. Now, Flex 1 is commonly the, the position where they play the off tank. If you have to go triple DPS, that's the person to do it. And then your Flex 2 is Emit Pain, which is normally like your Blaster or the person who swaps to the triple tank if you ever use that. Now, we've seen this team run triple tank, and we've seen them run quad tank this season as well. So it'll be interesting to see what kind of comps they come out with we've seen them run double support and triple dps as well this team is probably one of the most flexible teams in the entire league uh let alone paladins or let alone the pcl but they are one of the most um not only explosive and detail oriented teams in all of paladins but they're very flexible as well uh, Emit Payne is regarded as the best player on console overall, and I would have to agree with that. I think there are some other players that are uh, maybe better if you're looking at one particular position, but I think Emit Payne would be uh, the number one overall all-around player uh, on console in my opinion. Now, let's take a look a little deep into this. Now, I know you guys see some things on the uh, – you see maps right there and you see champions, so let's, let's talk about this. Uh, so – Jaguar Falls was the most played map in PCL. It was picked 45 times, and it was picked three times by Hype Unit, and that was the most, that was the highest picked map they chose. Now, granted, a lot of matches came down to them being uh, forfeited, so we didn't get quite a large sample size from this team, but nonetheless, we don't really need to see that much from this team to know that they are one of the top four teams in all of console because we've seen these players go to land numerous times uh this will be the third land for exodia this will be the what wonderful has been to every single land uh emit pain will, this will be his second land that he attends third land that he's qualified for same with exodia he qualified for valencia but didn't actually go uh and this will be shoes shoes only missed one land that was spring of 2017 or 2018, excuse me, and Trenzic has been to every land except for Valencia and HRX in January of 2018. So a lot of land experience between these teams. Miracle and Cool Man have also been to uh, multiple lands themselves. Uh, so Jaguar Falls, their most played map, and they'll really probably have to play that map a ton during the placement and the console wars as well. That's a very heavily favored map, as you can tell, because it was picked 45 times in the PCL and that was the most picked map. So are they strong on it? Yes. Have they prepared for Jaguar Falls? Yes. Are they good on it? Yes. And we've seen them run triple tank on it. We've seen them run triple DPS on it. We have even see them run double support with a damage support as an IO being played by Emit Pain. And it was, it was a beauty to watch. It was like right around the time when Io first came out. So people weren't really sure how to play her correctly in compositions in the uh, esports arena at first. So that was very awesome to see. Uh, so let's take a look at the champions they have up there. We have Barrick and Genos. Now, of course, the team has zero losses. So uh, there weren't any champions that took losses. So I was, I was more so looking at champions that they were trying to prioritize what champions were they drafting the most what champions were they trying to go after in the drafts when i'm looking at those drafts 
uh, during the games. And Barrick and Genos really stood out to me. The reason why this t- those really stood out to me is because, you know, Trenzik is the, the, the for sure front line. If they go triple DPS, Wonderful will get it. Now, they did swap around a couple times in the regular season, but that's just to, you know, keep things fresh, flex around, uh, just have fun pretty much. They, they knew they had it in the bag, so it didn't matter. Um, once they qualified as well, and there was no chance of them not getting the, the playoff spot, spot, uh, they really just, you know, just messed around, let it, let it all hang out, whatever. Uh, but Barrick, they picked him 11 times. So of course he was 11 and 0 and Genos was 10 and 0. Grover was also 10 and 0, but, um, they used Grover, like if Genos was banned or already taken, it seemed rewatching a lot of these VODs. Uh, and so what this tells me is that they really like this Genos and this Barrett combo. They really like adding that damage together. And I think that when you have two damages like Exodia, like Emit Pain, you're going to see Pain flex to all these weird things like IO and, and some blasters and some hit scans. And then you have Exodia, who's your for sure hit scan, going to be playing a lot of the flank champions as well. Um, and those are very dominant on console. So if you pair that with a Genos, that Luminary buff is still there. Um, you know, Torvald doesn't have, you know, Torvald's bubble damage amp got nerfed. Uh, and other than that, you have Furia. And they didn't really prioritize the Furia. A lot of teams prioritize Furia over Genos when going against Hype Unit. So if you're able to maybe ban out the Genos, or maybe even the Barrack, considering Barrack and Anara are pretty much the only for sure two main tanks in the game if you want to go with a main tank, then I think that that could maybe give you a slight edge against Hype Unit, but still a tough squad. Keys to victory for this team. Exodia needs to step up. A lot of people thought he wouldn't be on the roster after the midseason invitational, um, where people tend to get very, you know, uh antsy about teams' uh success at lands and saying, oh, this person threw, blah, blah, blah. A lot of people were very, very upset with how Exodia played. Um, and you know, even sources within hype unit said, yeah, you know, he was not very up to par but at the same time we all weren't we were playing with a sub who was a frontline sub uh being yui he had to replace him mid pain during that land so you know the circumstances weren't the best either beforehand so whatever it may be but shu a couple weeks ago has assured me that they are fine and they are rolling at 100 percent right now so exodia really needs to step up and, and prove to all the the fans that he is still there to give his 100%, and he is still a top player among the ranks. Uh, and then the other one is Trenzik needs to play his off tanks to perfection because they have a weird this this team has a weird uh, way of playing. You know, Trenzik is the frontline player, so if they go solo tank, more often than not, Trenzik is going to be that solo frontline. But when you see them running these double tank compositions, wonderful plays the Fernando, he plays the Inara, he plays the Barrack, you know, so he's playing the main tank most of the time. And then you have Trenzik playing the off tanks like Khan and Atlas. And it's, you know, it's a little confusing looking at the roster and then you look at them play and you're like, wait a minute, what, what, who's the flex? You know, who's the, who's the main tank, whatever it may be. So he has to play his front line, his off tanks to perfection to keep from the team's lineup kind of breaking down. I wouldn't necessarily call it a breakdown, but it could be potentially dangerous there. Um, so, you know, if, if he can't play those perfectly, then wonderful, maybe they have to flex to a three DPS or maybe they have to flex to three tanks or, or maybe they'll put wonderful on off tank because we've seen him play things like ruckus, uh, very, very well. So be interesting to see how well they do in that scenario. Uh, so let's go on to our next team right now. Oh, wait a minute. I did want to do after every team. Do they have a chance at winning the world championship? Now, they do get the run through the bracket. Will they win the world championship hype unit? I'm going to say no. I think potentially they could win the console wars. They could make it into the PC bracket and do very uh, well against maybe the first round team. Second round would be stretching it, I think. It all depends on how the bracket works out. Um, And we'll talk about that in the next video. But... Does Hype Unit win the World Championship? I'm going to go with no. All right, so let's take a look at our second team now. We've got Cyclone, your Xbox European representatives this time. They went 33-9. and nine. They actually lost two sets this season uh, to Vroom Vroom. So came down to almost the wire. Uh, not necessarily. The other two teams in the division really couldn't help Vroom Vroom out any. Um, 
Interesting lineup going into the the bracket here. We have Luke is too good, who is naturally a support player, will be playing front line. Uh, and we've seen him do it with Radiant Esports in phase one of this season. And we've seen him do it the last week of this phase two in this season as well. Um, which means their original front line, Yui, will be placed on DPS. Welshmania will then go to the flex two position. We've seen him play that a couple times as well. Fanatics is still there as your flex one and Satisfies comes in as your support player. Some of you who aren't familiar with Satisfies, he used to be on Elevate way back in January of, well, in 2017 and then in HRX of 2018 in January. And he won the world championship with uh, SJP, Wonderful, uh, Styles, and uh, GR Crazy. Uh, they beat Shu Wu, Skeppy, Soldier Bot, and uh, Comedy back then, who were the Blight Squad. So Satisfies has LAN experience. And he's won a LAN. He's won a world championship for console. Um, so this could add some death. But here's my, you know, is he... Is he ready to play at this stage again? He didn't play all PCL 2019. He didn't play in 2018. Um, there was rumors he was coming back in 2018 for the PCL, but he didn't. Uh, so their sub will be Scarcity, I believe, or Scarcity, a.k.a. used to be Potent. I think that'll be their sub. They almost didn't have Satisfies because of roster locks, but then they realized that he wasn't roster locked. He never played in the PCL this season. So he gets to play scarcity doesn't have to play i think he'll be the sub they bring maybe um if i had to guess that would be it uh roster problems all season though as you can see because they're making adjustments now they had harvey they had king kings won't be able to make land and and i don't know why um no one has told me and i don't care to ask because this will be the second time and at this point you just gotta put it behind you and focus on the future if i'm cyclone uh, let's talk about their maps. Bright Marsh and Splitstone were the most picked map for these two teams. I think that they knew that a lot of the other teams would be picking the more common maps. So they tried to practice maps that they aren't common with. Or maybe some maps that they're trying to sneak some things in. We know they're strong on Serpent. We know they're strong on Jaguar Falls and Stonekeep and things like that. Um, they've played a lot of Bright Marsh uh, or Welsh and Fanatics. Yui have played a lot of Bright Marsh at lands in their uh, history. So maybe they're trying to improve on that map splitstone's a big wild card map usually at lands uh let alone during the season i mean it helped stush beat flashpoint in phase one so who knows uh they also ban fish market every week um and they left the other ban as like sort of a flex where they can work with you know is this team good on that map let's ban that one as our second choice but they ban fish market this goes all the way back to uh, when you were able to start banning maps. I mean, Fish Market was banned every time by Gangstars, every time by um, every time by uh, Vexed, and now every time by Cyclone throughout the entire 2019 season. So Welsh Mania, not a big fan of Fish Market, so he's just going to throw that one out. Um, so I would look, I would expect them to ban Fish Market as a map choice going into this bracket. And the other one, they have some room to work with. Now, Yui played more Barrack than Anara, and Luke is better with Anara. Now, as I said earlier, the two big main tanks, like for sure main tanks, are Barrack and Anara. And I think Barrack and Anara are going to be pretty important in their set versus Hype Unit. But more importantly, Barrick, because we said that, you know, Hype, one of their priority champs would be Barrick. So is this team, because when Yui is playing frontline, they prioritize Barrick more than Anara. But with Luke, he he's played more Anara and played Anara better than he has Barrick in his time as a frontline for both this team and Radiant Esports in the past. So it'll be interesting to see what they're able to do. Are they going to draft the Barrack more so than the Inara? Who knows, but that'll be interesting to see. Uh, so keys to success. Here's the thing. Is Satisfy's land ready right now? Hasn't played all 2019 on the competitive stage. Now they're placing them in there as the starting support for the console wars and then potentially the placement or the, the placement rounds if they make it into the crossplay bracket. So this will be interesting to see how he plays, how he adjusts. Um, you know, back when he played with Elevate at the World Championship in, in 2018 of January, um, you know, he prioritized Saris and 
got huge ultimates off. So the game's changed a lot since then. Is he ready? Is he able to contend at that level? Another one is Yui playing DPS. How will he match up against the other DPS players? He's going against Exodia and Emit Pain in the first round. Then in the second round, he has to go against either Ghost and Raukion or uh, Skeppy and Prosper. All three of those lineups are death, man. So how well is Yui going to be able to play? How much is he? How much pressure is he going to be under with Welsh Mania beside him? Can Welsh Mania carry him? Or can Yui keep up at a point where it kind of takes some pressure off of Welsh Mania and they're able to find some success off of that? That'll be the question to be answered. And can Luke handle playing? Quote unquote playing in his first land. This is his second time going to land. He was a sub slash coach for uh, Vexed way back in spring of 2018. So this time he's going to actually have to play, it seems. How will he handle that, especially since he's not playing his uh, go to role as support? Now, does Cyclone have a chance at winning the world championship? If this was the MSI roster, I would say I. Could see a chance they put up a great fight against that hype unit squad back then um and you know they play very well but roster is looking way different some role swaps as well this is going to be interesting in the console wars alone do i see them winning the world championship no all right so up next we have fatal ambition now this don't 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 go crazy people just an uh, an org change this was the onslaught squad okay so they're now fatal ambition um let's take a look at the lineup here it is the same lineup that they've been using uh for all of phase two and most of phase one onishi on front line that's e knives or the other shutter if you're uh an old an old an oldie an og uh juman gok which was neil ut neil or neil bonstrong whatever you want to say so Juman Gok will be on support. Raukion will be on DPS. Swarmshi will be on the Flex 1. And Flex 2 will be Ghost, uh, which was formerly TKO Ghost. We'll, we'll see if he changes his name back because he's no longer with Onslaught. But here's the thing, man. Um, Onishi and Juman Gok go into yet another land as a player for themselves. Um, but Swarmshi, this will be his second land. He went to HRX last year, but he was the coach for Flashpoint. So this will be the first time he's a player uh, and then we have Raukion and Ghost. This is their both their first land ever. Raukion's been trying for two years, always finishing just short of the mark. But here he is this time. Huge gyro fanatic now. Everyone knows that. So it'll be interesting to see him play that against some top teams. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's take a look. They went 36-3. and three. They only dropped three maps. I believe one of those was to... Yes, one of them, well, they dropped one map to each team in their division. They dropped one map to Hydra Gaming uh, one week. They dropped one map to Heating Up, but that was the old Heating Up roster before the big change. Um, and they dropped one map to Stremix as well. So, you know, not totally perfect, but they did a great job. Went 36-3. and three. And... Take a look at their maps here. Stone Keep and Ice Mines, big things that stand out to me. They ban Stone Keep every single week almost. Uh, there's 13 weeks, 12 playable weeks with one buy. So out of the 12 times, right? So each, you, you can only ban a map once per week. So out of 12, they ban Stone Keep nine times. I believe this is in preparation for Flashpoint. We all know Flashpoint is very good on Stone Keep. They want to land with Stone Keep. Legacy went 39 and 0 on that map with Makoa. Um, they they kind of rode the coattails of Stone Keep to last year's HRX and then elevate Bandit against them. They found success. You know that was part. That was a small part of their success against Flashpoint. Is Fatal Ambition trying to do the same thing? Are they trying to ban Stone Keep against Flashpoint? That's what I think it is. Um, it could also be that they can't play Stone Keep, which doesn't make sense to me as much as everyone would think because they chose Jag Falls five times and that was the most chosen map from them. But it's good for hit scans, just like Stone Keep. The maps have similarities. Uh, Stone Keep does have better high ground than, uh, than Jag Falls, of course, but 
still a little mind boggling to me that, you know, they're that bad on stone keep that they have to ban it. I think they're, they're kind of preparing themselves. I think maybe they are bad on it, just not as bad. So they're preparing themselves to go against flashpoint. I think that's what is the big thing there. Uh, Ice mines, they banned it six times, which was their second most banned map. So they banned it 50% of the time. Um, despite it being a very popular map amongst all other teams and all other regions in the PCL. So it'll be interesting to see if they don't ban ice mines, will they have to play it and how well will they produce on that map? Because they have only, they they haven't had to play it 50% of the time guaranteed. Um, and I believe they've only played it about two other times as well in the other six weeks that they didn't ban it. Uh, so let's talk about their champions right here. We have Grover and Ash on the board for them. Here's why. Ash. Let's talk about that one first. Um, Swarmshi and Onishi can both play Ash very well, but Swarmshi plays it more like an off tank because he is the off tank. And the main tank Onishi plays Ash like the main tank. Now, here's the thing. You look at the breakdown here. And this team, see, they've got Eve above 40% win rate with it on main tank and off tank but they win more games with ash as the main tank than they do as the off tank so it'll be interesting to see how well they're able to uh draft the ash into a main tank situation you know is barrack and anara on the board do you want to take those instead most people would say yes uh but you know if they're going to take the ash we've seen ash come out of nowhere um you know Ash is really good. Then she's okay. Then, you know, people play the other tanks because the other tanks are better. Not that Ash is bad. Then all of a sudden, land comes around, kind of like MSI, and boom, Ash is a big, big part of success for most teams. And it's a big uh, first pick kind of thing. So, will that be the case? If not, who will be that champion? That kind of happens every time there's a land. So, if it is Ash again, Will Fatal Ambition try to grab her? And will they try to play her more as an off tank or a main tank? That'll be the discussion I'm looking to answer. Uh, and then there is Grover. Now, a lot of people already know this, but for those of you who don't, Juman Gok really gets chewed out for his limited champ pool, people would say. This team played Grover 15 times. 36-3. They played Grover 15, 15 and 0. Never lost with Grover, right? So almost half of the wins came with a Grover in the lineup. When they don't have Grover, they have a Genos. When they don't have Grover or Genos, they have a Saris. Very rarely do they go to other support champions. That's been a big topic of discussion when Juman got comes up as a support player, as a land contender, big, huge thing. I know he's been working on it, and I, I want to see what he has done to prepare going into this land because if, if it's still the same case, you know, you can ban Grover or ban Saris or ban Genos. You know, ban one of them, take two of them. Ban two of them, take the other one. Uh, who knows? We can get it before they do, whatever the case may be. How well can they adjust? And that's one of their keys to success is Juman Gak's champ pool depth. Has it gotten larger? Has he gone deeper into his champ pool? We'll see coming up at land. Uh, another key to success, this is the first land for Ghost and Raukion. Both experienced players. Ghost has improved a lot. I mean, he was on a very bad team in 2018. He worked his way up. Now he's on a good team. He's got a good support system and surrounding cast around him. Um, so he's really developed over the last year and a half. How well is he going to, you know, are the nerves going to get to him at his first land when he's on camera, when he's on the big stage for the first time? Uh, Raukion, same thing with him. I think he'll be a little bit more calm and poised, but how well will he be able to, how will, well will he be able to play with the gyro against these top teams at the top level? Uh, and then the other time, other th key to success is Swarm She's first land as a player. We've seen him, I hate to say this, but we've seen him kind of choke some certain clutch situations out online. And a lot of people really put the, the axe to him after the Flashpoint loss 
in the first round of the HRX playoffs last season. So when he was a coach, so you know, can he put that behind him? Is that going to be looming over him like a dark cloud? Who knows? First land as a player. Hopefully he does good. Now, real question. Is Fatal Ambition a world championship contender? I'm going to have to go with no, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so let's talk about our last console team, which is your PS4 European representative in Flashpoint, right? Flashpoint finished 33-5 and five this season. The front line will be the Legacy. Support will be Storm Avatar. DPS will be Prosper Logic. Flex 1 will be Good Lad, and Flex 2 will be Skeppy. This lineup, just like Hype Unit, is dangerous, dude. Dangerous. Man, this lineup can go triple DPS with Good Lad as the third DPS. It can go triple tank with Skeppy as the third tank. It can go double support with Prosper or Skeppy. Skeppy can play the Pip. Prosper can play the Grok. Who cares? I mean, either one of them can probably play the IO. Um, you can go with crazy lineups here. Um, you also have two big things to note here. The Legacy and Good Lad can both play main tank. They can both play off tank. That is a two dual tank offensive front, dude. That is just insane right there. We've seen them both do it to high success numerous times in their careers. Um, so they have a two, they have a double dual tank threat right there. Then they have a double dual DPS threat as well with kind of mixing champ pools. And then they have their own champs that they play on their own, right? You have Prosper and Skeppy. Both can play Vivian. Both can play Victor. Both can play Strix. Both can play Kinesa. Both can play Drogos. Both can play Bomb King. Both can play Willow. The list goes on. Then you have champions like Lex and Shaolin or Skeppy. And you have champs like, um, oh man, brain fart. I mean, they both can play Talus. Skeppy plays the Andro. You know, if they got deep, if they got to dig deep into the the champ bag, there, they can do this, right? Storm Avatar always a rock on support. Um, he knows when to engage himself into a fight, and he knows when to back up. And he very good distributor of the heals. Knows when and how and who to heal. Um, so this team is dangerous, man. Uh, let's let's take a look at their maps now. Earlier in the video, we said Stonekeep was their strongest map. That's still a fact, but it wasn't their most played map this season. Sometimes it was banned against them. Sometimes they just left it alone. Um, it, it seems as if they've been working on other maps, maybe, um, especially when they start to look at the stats and they see uh, Onslaught or Fatal Ambition now banning that Stonekeep map very often. Um, so Jag Falls. Always a strong fight for them at land. They've done they've done big things on Jag Falls. They've had high success on that map, um, and they've won more Jag Falls than they've lost Jag Falls on land. So that'd be a big map for them. Look out for that one. Uh, let's take a look at their champs: Anara, Makoa, and Kyle. The reason why I have three here is because Anara they went fifteen and two. Makoa they went seventeen and two. Khan they went fourteen and two. Anara they went fifteen and two. Whether Legacy was playing it or Good Lad, right? Makoa 17 and 2. Whether Legacy or Good Lad was playing it, I would expect Good Lad to be playing the Makoa more so than Legacy at land. But if they're in a dire situation, they need that clutchness, probably going to give it to Legacy. Or if they run, you know, double off tank, they can give him the Makoa as well. Uh, Khan 14 and 2. Legacy, Good Lad, part of that success, as well as Skeppy. When they triple tank, Skeppy gets the Khan and they do very well with it as well. Uh, as always keys to success for the flashpoint roster find adjustments asap that was the problem last season they went against elevate in the first round of the hrx playoffs the world championship stage triple tank they weren't able to adjust mid match in between the games in between the drafts they weren't able to adjust as as great as they had wanted so that was a big 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 problem for them so they need to find their adjustments ASAP if they start to fall behind or things start to collapse and they're not working properly, right? All right, let's talk about their next keys to success. Skeppy needs to prove why the North American squads shouldn't have left him behind, right? There was a chance that he was going to be maybe on one of them. You know, he signed with uh, Elevate way early in free agency. Then all of a sudden he wasn't on the team. Then he was with Heating Up. That didn't work out um, in the long run. Uh, he almost went to bust down. He ended up on Flashpoint. Prove to them they shouldn't have let you go. You were the rock of those lineups, so to speak, right? 
and find find Prosper some help, unlike HRX 20 team, right? Now, this isn't to say the rest of the team did bad at HRX last year, but Prosper was making insane plays with the dredge, not only on the damage front, he had that back door with the teleport on Jag Falls, um, you know, like I said, but it, it felt like he was trying to do more than needed because of the rest of the team wasn't able to keep up with their opponents. So find Prosper some help. Does this team have a chance at winning the world championship? As much as I'd like to say yes to all of these console teams, answer, still no. I think that hype unit with their skill and strats could make it pretty deep into the placement or to the crossplay bracket. And I think that this team Flashpoint could as well. I mean, Skeppy, Legacy, Storm, Good Lad, all can play on PC with mouse and keyboard. They've been working on that even more since MSI. So who knows, right? We'll see. But right now, I don't see them winning a world champ. All right. So moving on to the Paladins Minor League, there's only two teams to talk about here. And let's talk about the North American team hype unit first. They went 33 and 13. They only dropped one set all phase. I, if I'm not mistaken, it might have been a forfeit. I don't think they were able to play that one. I didn't find a VOD for it or anything like that. So that's what I'm going to assume. I could be wrong. Uh, but their lineup this time, Frontline Dethroner, T-Mac will be on support, Edgem on DPS, Flex 1 will be Tay, and Flex 2 will be Payne. Payne and Dethroner came from the Pittsburgh Knights roster in the PPL from Phase 1. Tay has uh, proven himself to be a great off-tank and flex player. Edgem made it to land as well as Tay last time, uh, and T-Mac as well. Let's talk about this lineup. They had some hard-fought battles with Sanguine in the regular season, but I think that Edgem and Payne were better DPS players than uh, Stigma and Neo throughout the season at first. Towards the end of this, the phase, Edgem kind of was slowing down, not, you know, overly exciting to watch. Um, still rock in the lineup, still puts up his numbers, still does his uh, job, still plays his role nicely. But the big things for this squad, Payne, give him the champs that he is comfortable with, right? Tay, give him Atlas, give him Khan. That's why those champions are right there. You know, they their highest success is when they have the Khan and the Atlas and when Tay is playing it. Um, I think Tay has proven during the phase that he is a top contender for best PML players right now. And I think that he could, with a good run in this bracket, potentially say, hey, give me a shot in the PPL, right? Uh, let's take a look at their maps. Bright Marsh and Warder's Gate. Bright Marsh, they've had high success on that map. I don't think they dropped the Bright Marsh all season could be wrong here with my notes kind of blurry with some of the pml stuff notes uh stats wise but i don't believe they lost a single bright marsh map and warders gate they have been very good on warders gate even when it comes down to 3-3 it still looks like they're in control the entire time they've played con and atlas on that map every single time they've played that map i believe and tay is just exquisite with the uh overpowers with con the Ultimates, the Exiles from Atlas, just beautiful. Tay has really stepped up this this phase. Uh, T Mac is still a great support in the back line. But here's the things: you have to get the Throner, Barrack, or Inara. You have to get Tay, Con, or Atlas. You have to give Edgem a hit scan. You have to give Payne a, a blaster he's comfortable with. And T Mac has got to stay alive and not be so aggressive. He's kind of aggressive. Um, and it works out for him. You know, you can see slash lines from him like 2, 3, and 45. Um, yeah, he died three times, but they still won. He got aggressive, applied the damage, whatever it may be. They've got to get the champs. They've got to get these drafts. Do I see this team winning a world championship? <sighs> no. But I think they could beat one or two PPL teams. All right, next we up, 
we have the PML European representative here, and it's all business, and that's what they're going to be coming into. Now, if you're familiar with this team, you've noticed one big thing already in the lineup. No Bugsy. And I even when they sent me the roster, Closart sent me the roster, my first response, not even 30 seconds in, what about Bugsy? Apparently, Bugsy has some IRL things that is preventing him from coming to land. I hope that everything's okay with him. Um, I don't know what they are. They didn't disclose them to me. Um, so whatever it may be, I hope Bugsy's doing fine. I think he got married recently too. So um, he's been in and out of the lineup throughout the entire season. Um, more so in phase one than phase two. But he played well when he was there. He helped them get to land. So now all they got to do is win it, right? Uh, unbelievable at front line. He's a, he's a world champion. So that's big, big uh, veteranship behind them. You have Xenos on support. Devozi on DPS. Uh, correct me in the comments below if I'm saying these names wrong, by the way. You have Tutu on Flex 1 and Madeira on Flex 2. So Madeira uh, did very well this season on Blasters. So it'll be interesting to see them come back into the lineup and play some Blasters, especially without Bugsy. Uh, they played very well on the Eevee and the Willow when I've seen them play it. Uh, and Devozi, not a huge sample size from this player. Uh, because Bugsy was in the lineup most of the time for phase two. So it'll be very interesting to see Devozi. Um, sometimes Madeira was out of the lineup, Devozi was in, Bugsy was in with him. So um, Bugsy kind of stole the show most of the time. But Devozi seems calm and collective going into this and in the last couple games that I've seen them play. Um, they play good hit scans too. Uh, they're Leanne, very nice. And I've seen them. Play the Cassie a couple times, I believe, as well. They did okay on it. But Leon, I think, is the strongest champion for this player. So if they can get him Leon, I think they'll have a higher success rate with him on the DPS. Uh, Xenos, pretty good in support. Nothing really stood out to me. Unbelievable, of course, the world champion one time. Uh, I think that he brings a good veteranship to this lineup, but he doesn't have Bugsy with him anymore, so he kind of has to be the sole leader of this squad. Um, I forgot to mention they went 32-13. and 13. Bit a lot of competition uh, in this division with Penta, um, even though you know their roster was kind of sl uh, sloppy at the beginning. Uh, uh, Sour Team put up a good fight, and even One Trick Pony, good games from them. Uh, and I forgot to mention, you know, in North America, a lot of people say it was free, but you know, Hype Unit had to battle Sanguine, and Exile even stepped up, dude. Five Stack had some good long games against everyone, but Exile stepped up, man. They didn't finish with zero losses. They didn't even finish with one or two. I think they got four on the season, so they did great. But back to all business here. Uh, last person I want to talk about, Toot Toot. This is very important because I think Toot Toot has really stepped up. Seen them play for some of the, the th uh, Tier 3 teams in that scene um, in some community tournaments as well. Then seen them come into this lineup, and I was really impressed with Toot Toot's overall progression this season. Great, great off tank. I've seen him play Torvald very well in the past, but uh, won't expect to see him play that as much. But seen him play a lot of Khan and very successful, a lot of Atlas, a lot of Ash as well. And he really creates so much space for this team. I think Toot Toot's going to be a big part of the success for this team moving forward. Uh, let's take a look at their maps. Jag Falls and Shattered Desert. This team does extremely well on Shattered Desert, and that partly goes into the two champions there, Barrick and Furia. They draft these two champions a lot, man. And Furia is part of their success. They hit tons of uh, big ultimates in flames for the damage boost. And when you're playing on a map like Shattered Desert, that really creates havoc for the opponent because you can spread the... Pretty much, I, I'm going to use basketball term here. You can spread the court, right? You can spread the field. Don't have to like play as close together. Big wide open map so she can heal pretty much everyone from very long distances. Those inflames come in clutch as well. Big damage numbers. Not a lot of places to hide and to line of sight the damage. Um, big open uh, objective, capture objective as well. They play very well in Shadow Desert. Jag Falls as well. Um, they draft Khan into that map very much uh, or more than any other map they draft Khan on. Um, and they play it very well. Tutu gets very good overpowers on that map. He's able to position himself perfectly in the right time as well. So 
all business, very good squad. Do I see them making it deep in the uh, playoffs? Do I see them? I could potentially see this team making it to the HRX World Championship bracket for as a top eight, as a as one of the eight teams. Do I see them winning the World Championship? No. Um, I think this would be your Cinderella story. You know, we saw MSI be our Cinderella story in or we saw Penta, excuse me, be the Cinderella story at MSI. I think this team could be the Cinderella uh, going into, I think Hype Unit's better, but I think all business will be the Cinderella story going in. And uh, when we take a look at the bracket in our next video, we'll see if that would be possible for them. All right, now moving on to the PPL. First up, we have Kanga Esports. This team finished in seventh place at 9 and 18 which was very disappointing for them because they have been struggling as of late um they were you know in phase one they were a top five uh, maybe i i know they were top six i can't remember if they were ever in fifth place um I, and they were having great games i mean the lineup was looking good yet joel's jara chronics rhino and evil eye here's the thing some other teams got better roster changes on the knights and uh not as vincere and nip and virtus pro really kind of set this team behind the bar and king has been struggling as of lately um and that that's been showing clearly uh maps let's talk about their best maps bright marsh and splitstone quarry i think they like playing these maps that have these enclosed areas allowing rhino and joels to really kind of gang up on people as the two front lines um, and we're going to talk about that even more. So Splitstone, you'd say that's not very enclosed, but they do have a lot of enclosed areas on that map where big team fights can go down to gain position, uh, uh, for, for the team fights or on the map. And they've been doing an okay job of winning those fights in those enclosed spaces. They just can't close games out. That's their biggest problem. They can't close games out. If they start to fall behind, they just they just fall behind and if it's a close match they just can't squeeze it out for the win um let's talk about their champions though we have ruckus and ash and here's the two big things with this evil eye first off uh great blaster but everyone else in the league's kind of got his number so to speak you know it's like uh when you're watching baseball and you see a guy comes up to bat and every time he comes up to bat he is just laying hits down on a pitcher and they say oh he's got his number you know it's kind of like he knows exactly what that pitcher is going to do every single time and that's pretty much how it feels watching evil eye play he's still a great blaster still has his moments recently but most of the time it seems as if he is predictable to almost everyone he's playing against right uh, but back to the champs, Ruckus and Ash, two huge champions for this team. They found success with Ruckus uh, very early on in the season and kind of late into phase two. Ash as well. But here's the problem. They only have that success when Rhino is playing those two champions. Joels cannot play the off tanks. And that is the biggest problem this team has because they like to be aggressive. They like to draft these double off tank compositions on these wide open maps like Splitstone and Shattered Desert and Fish Market, and it's not helping them. Joel's cannot keep up, he cannot keep pace as the off tank, and he has to play those main tanks like Anara and Barrack. So you have to get him something he can play comfortably, uh, such as the Barrack and the Ash, maybe even a Fernando. Rhino's been doing great recently, um, despite the, the team's losses. So looking for Rhino to really step up and take charge here, especially if he gets one of his good off tanks in Ruckus and Ash, maybe even a Con. Chronix is also a rock in this lineup. And I think that, it, I think Chronix, you know, I, I love this team. They went out and got Jera. They went out and got Evil Eye. They still have three out of the original five, you know, Aussie boys. But I think 2020, Chronix, I think he's one step away from winning a world championship i think if he was on a different team or you know they brought in a couple different pieces on this team he could be a serious contender he's a great player i think he's kind of still underrated um but 
he's gonna have to really carry a large workload here and i think jara is gonna have to try and help him there as well as rhino that's the three core um Evil Eye and Joel's are really going to have to step up. Do I see Kanga winning a world championship? Now, they did not qualify for the bracket already. Remember, there's four teams already in that, um, and we'll mention who those are. But do I see, So they'll have to play to get into the bracket. In, they'll have to play in the placements round to get into the, the championship bracket. Do I see Kanga winning a world championship? Not this year, boys. Not this year. All right, next up, we have the Renegades. Now, I kind of went out of order. I did Kanga first. They were in seventh place. Renegades finished in eighth place. They were 4-24. and 24. They never really were predicted to go any higher than eighth place, I guess. Um, they've had some big problems. They let go of their coach after or before or during MSI, whatever it may be. Um, they thought they were going to maybe get some roster changes. Those didn't end up coming. Um, the player's been trying to improve, whatever it may be. Renegade stinks right now, um, and they have all season. That's just the plain truth. Um, I'm not trying to be mean or 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 uh, you know a bad person. That's just what it is. Four and twenty four, um, and in those four, they did have success. I think they won two consecutive at the very beginning of phase two, so they were looking good there early on for about a two days. Um, you got Hero, Viral, and Vocal, Moonchopper, and Shadow. I think Shadow has improved dramatically over the last year, especially between Renegade Shadow, Splice Shadow, PML Shadow, or, or PGS Shadow, so to speak. Um, and I think he's been a, a big core uh, in this team's minor success. I think Moonchopper has kind of fallen off. Um, and it's because he has to play champions he's not used to playing. I've always seen Moonchopper play DPS champions. Now he's in that flex one position, only really gets to play the DPS when they play triple deeps. Um, and, and the tank, not, not the best of those flex ones uh, around the, the community. Um, and he, it looks as if he's been struggling. In vocal, though, has been a, a solid rock as well. Um, he's still young. Very young. I think he's like 16, right? 17, whatever it may be. Let me know in the comments below. Um, or I think he just turned 16 or whatever. This kid's been on the big stage already with SK Gaming. And now, you know, he's in eighth place. So he's kind of, he was he was like middle of the pack. Now he's bottom of the pack. It's only a matter of time till he's the top, I guess. Um, he's, got a, he's got a long way to go. But he's he's got a high ceiling on this kid. Uh, viral... Just been kind of mediocre. I, I've seen some improvements from him, but it's very tough to gauge this roster. Not much success coming out of him. I think Hero uh, is the best player on the team. Or excuse me, I think Invoco is the best player on the team. I think Hero's been playing the best lately. Um, Shadow's improved, Invoco's improved, Hero's improved. Viral Moonchopper, slight improvements, but pretty mediocre from those two. They're going to have to get the Eevee. I think Shadow is going to have to make insane plays with Eevee going into this. Um, Genos is going to be a big topic of discussion. Kind of put Viral in the, uh, the I don't want to call it autopilot. You know, you, you still have to do things. But kind of give him less of a workload and more of a, hey, here's some heals. Do more damage. Let me stay alive kind of thing. A little bit more relaxing, I guess, than compared to like a Damba. Uh, and two big maps that they've had some success on is Stonekeep and Jag Falls. Haven't won them all when they played those maps, obviously. But uh, when they play Stonekeep and Shadows on Eevee, they have a higher win rate than when they do not have Eevee on Stonekeep. So, you know, just play the maps you're good at. Try to play the comps and the champs that you're comfortable with and, and just try to grind this out. Do I see Renegades winning a world championship? Absolutely not. Stranger things have happened, though, in both sports and esports. So, hey, I could be wrong. Uh, so let's talk about the Pittsburgh Knights. They finished 10 and 17. They moved up to sixth place. They were, I believe, seventh place going into MSI. And I think that I remember Cus Cutie telling me and Ricotta, you know, they told me their roster changes before they announced them. I kept quiet. They were like, hey, I think we can be a top four. Like, yeah, I think you can too, but you got a long way to go. Um, 
not quite top four, but they made top six, so not too shabby of an improvement, especially against the competition that they have. They'll be going into this with Zarini, Cascuti, Rikana, G Bunny, and Simsalu. I think that Simsalu did very well uh, for being brought back into the highest stage of the game. Um, and I think that he Simsalu met my expectation, and so did Zarini. I don't think he met everyone else's expectations because he won MSI and he went insane. Everyone's like, oh, yeah, he's going to come in and carry this team. And ah! no, that's not going to happen, guys. It's not going to happen. You, you got a totally different squad here, man. Um, so I think he met the expectations that I set for him. They finished 10 and 17, not too shabby. And they went, they, they, they went up one in the, in the standings. So, I mean, not too bad, right? Uh, so their champions to look out for will be Maven Pip, of course, because of Simsalu. Can they get him the Mave? Can they get him the Pip? Can they find the success? Another thing to know is that Cus Cutie is playing support, but he can also play Mave. Don't see him doing it though. But he can also play Pip if they go double support and give Cus Cutie the Pip, or if they solo heal with the Pip. I mean, who knows? They can run quad tank with this squad. We've seen Ricotta play uh, front line and have some success with it, and we've seen Simsalu do it in triple DPS or triple tank comps, and he's done amazing with it as well. Um, do I see this team winning the world championship? Well, if they play Frog Isle like they've been playing all season, no. Um, they have to step up on that map. If they play like they've been playing Shattered Desert all season, then yes, I can see this team winning the world championship. So overall, do I see this team winning a world championship? I'm going to say yes. And this is the first one I've said yes to in this video. I think this squad is good. And I think that they have nothing to lose. And I think that they're going to have a very difficult road to get there. But I think that they can um, beat the adversity. And I think that Simsalu and, and Ricotta are going to step up big, man. They've both gotten player of the week a few times each this season as well from console corner. So can this team win the world championship? They are in sixth place in the standings, but I believe baby, I think Pittsburgh can make a run for the, 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 the trophy. Next up we have space station gaming, baby. And they took a tumble in phase two. They were a top four team. Now they finished fifth at 13 and 14. Reach out or reach out. Mito, Ares, Sadak, and FRZ, God, Freeze God, will be coming in as the lineup, of course. Now, here's the thing with this lineup. Going into MSI, I said this lineup, they need to make a roster change. Something needs to happen. And people are like, no, 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 that team's really good. They made it to the World Championship. Or uh, last year, they made it to the semifinals. They lost to the team in game seven that ended up winning the world championship. Blah, 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 blah. Guys, I understand you want to keep the Brazilian brotherhood uh, together. Although I think like one of them is not Brazilian, whatever though. Uh, you, you want to keep that brotherhood together, but I, th come on. They fell, I think two, maybe just one place in the standings in phase two. Oh, that's not cause for concern, but nah, it is because you're in fifth, not top four, which means you have to go through the placement bracket and you're going to have to make it out of this bracket to get to the world championship bracket. Can they do it again? Who knows? They did it last year, but people have seen more footage of them playing now. So they kind of like have their number. These top teams have been playing them all season as well. It used to be Space Station was just playing like the PGS teams. Then they'd show up to land and play the PPL teams and be like, hey, we're as good as you guys. Now it's kind of like, hey, um, we're as good as you guys. And the other teams are like, yeah, we know. But we've been beating you most of the time this season. So kind of know what's coming. Um, I think this team is in desperate need of a roster change. I haven't really quite worked out what it is. I haven't run those scenarios through my head. But they're not going to be able to do that going into this land. So let's get to what it is. Serpent Beach. They play this map more than any other team in all of Paladins. I'm dead serious when I say this. Throughout their entire history, going all the way back to last year's PGS, they have played Serpent Beach more than any other PPL team, PCL team, PML team, and even community tournament teams, right? 
So they've got to find success on this map. They have more so than not, but they need to just destroy opponents on Serpent Beach, break their will to, to even want to take you to Serpent Beach. And then when they don't take you, you take them there. Um, Waters Gate is becoming a map that a lot of teams are playing very heavily into rotation. Space Station Gaming is kind of even on this map. And they kind of spread themselves thin with going with a lot of flank uh, heavy compositions in this map. They're going to have to stray away from that and kind of get some Cassie, Leon, Strix, Canessa, something long range and hit scan. Um, I know Cassie's not hit scan, but something long range with a high burst potential because they are getting waxed when they play just flanks on this map. So get some good tanks and get uh, at least one or two um, backline DPSs, so to speak. Find some success on Waters Gate, especially going into this bracket because there's some teams that can play Waters Gate very, very beautifully. Uh, top champions, Victor and Strix. Strix is up here because Freeze God has been playing amazing with it uh, as of recently. But will he find the same success now that people are kind of figuring out how to play against Strix um, after the most recent update? Victor's on this list because this team drafts Victor more than any other PPL team. Um, but they don't always find success with it. And Ares has to find that success with Victor. Um, you know, a lot of people say, run the burst mode. He does that. Doesn't work out every time. He's run cardio with it. Doesn't work out every time. Um, he's run shrapnel, I think, once or twice. Hasn't worked out uh, most of the time. So he's going to have to find success with this champion if they're going to draft it because this champion is good, I believe. I just think that this team does not play him good. Is the plainest way to say it. Do I see this team winning the world championship? Yes, but very low odds coming from me. Low percentage. Low percentage. We'll talk about it in the bracket. Up next, we have Virtus Pro. I'm going to go out and say this right now. This is the team I think is going to win the world championship. If I had to put teams in order of who I think is going to win the world championship, odds-wise, percentage-wise, whatever, I think it's this team. So I'm just going to say that right off the bat before we even get into this because this team is playing lights out as of recently dude they made it all the way to fourth place not a huge huge jump but a big jump nonetheless this team has been playing again lights out they went 15 and 11 finished in fourth place clinched into the winning winners bracket or the championship bracket they don't even have to play through placements they can sit back and just chillax just watch they play shattered desert beautifully probably the best shattered desert team with pittsburgh knights right behind them um, and even all business is up there in the top three with them. Fish Market, they play that just as beautifully. They can spread their offense. They can hold their defensive lanes. They can hold choke points beautifully. This team is playing unbelievable on these wide open maps. They take you to Shatter Desert. They take you to Fish Market. They take you to um, Waters Gate. They take you to these maps. Huge, huge points. Huge fights. Ascension Peak even, man. They're playing beautiful. You got to take those maps away from them. Force them into these smaller maps. Uh, but we got Dosips, Vexy, Race, K Crunchy, and Fish, Fishco. Fishco has been a solid rock as well as um, Dosips. Before going into MSI, I said this team needs to make a roster change. Hakate is a good player, but he's not playing as great as he can or should be. His champ pool is limited to very few hit scans, right? Then you have Dosips. Dosips is playing main tank. Uh, Pule Ule is playing off tank. That's not how it should be. Dosip should be on the off tank if Pule Ule is in that lineup because he's the better main tank and the more experienced main tank. And I haven't seen him play off tank to any success before the PPL this season. So if you lose Pule Ule, you pick up Crunchy. If you lose Dosips, you pick up Crunchy. They decided to keep Dosips, move him to front line, bring in Country or K Crunchy. And that's why Ash is on the board because he plays Ash Probably the best right now, in my opinion. He is dominant with this champion. He can get aggressive. He can play passive. He can push into you, and he knows when to back up, and he can just send you packing. He can close games out with Ash. He can open up entire off lanes himself. Um, he's been playing lights out with the Ash. Io's on the board as well because Virtus Pro is the first team to really figure out how to play with Io successfully. Not only that, they do it on the open maps like Shattered and Fish once again. And Vex has found out what to do with that Io both in double support and even as a single solo healer. Um, Leon and Vivian are on this because 
erase is just dominant with those two champions and he's been a solid solid player coming in from the pml they got him off of penta he got mvp over simsalu a lot of people thought uh simsalu or even Accenture should have gotten mvp at msi i agree with giving it to erase he was solid man and you know coming into the ppl as the msi mvp you have to prove yourself especially when everyone thinks that two other players should have gotten the mvp most likely and he has proven himself i think this guy's gonna have a long and illustrious career and i think that they can win a world championship all right next up we've got team envy ladies and gentlemen the defending world champions uh they finished 19 and 7 they finished in third place you got Rubu, Mr. Hayes, Rock Monkey, Talkie, and Random Noob. Now, here's the thing. Do I see them winning back-to-back world championships? No. Can it happen? Yes. Here's why I don't think they're going to be able to do it, right? It's because in the champions box, it says three DPS and off tanks. Here's the reason why those are listed and not actual champs. When they run triple DPS, you see Talkie is listed as the flex, right? But when they, when they have an off tank and a main tank in their lineup, Talkie's the main tank, Rubu's the off tank. When they go solo tank, Rubu's the tank. And Talkie is the triple DPS. And it, it, it's mind-boggling because um, it's not working. I don't, I don't know how well Rubu can play DPS if he has to play the triple DPS. I don't know how well he can play the support if he has to play double support. But I know Talkie is a very good player, but he's a better main tank than he is a, a, a DPS. And he's a better main tank than he is a double support, right? So... Here's the problem. That's why I think they're not going to be able to win the world championship is because this lineup cannot flex like the other teams can. But on the other hand, they could win back-to-back world championships because this team with the big brain of Meta Pusher somehow, some way, finds a way to do the impossible. They did it last season. Their mid-game adjustments, mid-match adjustments, insane um they play serpent beach a lot probably the most behind uh ssg and that's because they take ssg to serpent beach a lot or or vice versa um they're gonna have to find success on that map they've kind of been trailing on that map as of recently and timber mill as well they've only played timber mill a few times and they haven't had much success on this map and they're gonna have to find success on this map if they're gonna want to play against some of these other um teams at a top tier level going deep into the bracket now they're already in the championship bracket they don't play through the placements um as well as the next two teams we're going to talk about so they can kind of sit back do i see this team winning the world championship no is it possible yes because this team's just insane with adjustment all right up next we got ninjas in pajamas aka nip they finished second in the ppl at 19 and 7 uh they've got bonker bird alex diggy dog and is bittner or is bit tenor. Uh, we're just going to call him tenor, of course, because that's what everyone does. Um, I just put that there because this is his name actually in the game. Whatever. Moving on. Let's talk about this lineup. Bonker, solid rock at front line. He had a little bit of a rough patch there towards uh, the beginning of phase two, but he's picked it up and he's played well as of recently. Um, and he's a good buddy of mine. I love him. Shout out to Bonker there. Uh, and then we have Bird. Bird has been a solid uh, support player in all of his lustrous career and continues to do so and i got into an argument with someone a couple weeks ago where they're like bird's the best support in the people i was like no nah, i think it's cuss cutie they're like no way blah, blah. i'm like well birds have bird if you think about it has had a better supporting cast than cuss cutie's had and cuss cutie has still found two land wins and more success um than bird and here's why i say that because nip is cursed do i see them winning the world championship yeah yeah they're a very good team they're one of the best teams but the problem is is that bird even with all the surrounding cast he's always had nip seems most recently the last two hrx's and msi to collapse it's like they're cursed, man. Tenor needs that championship. Tenor needs that land win. Bird needs another world championship to cement him as one of the greatest of all time. Diggy Dog needs that world championship because he's been grinding this game. He came all the way from Australia, moved to Europe to play with these boys. Alex, 
big big player. Alex coming from the mouse, uh, the mouse esports, mouse sports, with no success at all. Here he is now, one of the best DPSs. Um, so let's get into it here. Buck and Leon, right? These are important because this team has been playing Buck more than any other team when everyone thinks that Buck's not good. And now all of a sudden people are questioning themselves, hey, is Buck good? And then some people are like, yeah, man, Buck OP. And then some people are like, nah, Buck's trash. And then some people are like, no, NIP is playing it. And then someone else is like in the background like, yo, NIP, NIP can win with anything, bro. And then people are like, oh, yeah, well, when you got Tenor and Alex, of course. Uh, Diggy Dog moving to the off tank role at the beginning of the season, big big uh, change for him. But he has played it very very well. I think this team is very good and could win a world championship. Uh, Leon is a big big play for them as well. When Alex plays Leon, he goes insane, kind of steals the show from the rest of the team. Um, and then you have Tenor who can play Leon and do the same exact thing as Alex. Um, so they can flex around as well. Uh, Bonker can even play some off tanks, although I wouldn't recommend it. He hasn't had great games, but he hasn't had bad games on the off tanks. Um, Diggy Dog is one of the better Atlas players in the league. Um, I think he's a better Atlas than he is Khan, so if they can try and get that Atlas, they'll have a great job. I think he plays Makoa very well, too, up to par with the other PPL Makoas. Um, and one thing I want to know is they this team, they play their maps very beautifully, like Bright Marsh and Serpent Beach. When they play Serpent Beach... Man, it's a it's a it's a thing of beauty to watch this team play, man, on Serpent Beach. The way Alex positions himself and Bird is out of the fight but in the fight at the same time, and they're right next to each other. And Alex is always there to protect Bird, and Bird's always there to make clutch stuns with the Damba or nice lifts with the Genos or crippling axes from the uh, Grover. He just knows when to do it, how to do it, why to do it, who to do it to, and where to do it from at all times and alex is always there right next to him and the rest of the team is just as great i think this team has the second best chance to win the world championship over navi and behind virtus pro i've got nip making it to the world championship and i and i i've got them as my second favorite to win and i want tenor to get that championship all right, on to our last and final team of the PPL and of this video. It's Nanis Vincere, Navi. They finished in first place at 21 and six. They've got Lazy, Spunky, Mutu, Phoenix, and Ninu. Big, big, big change uh, bringing in Ninu uh, since Creatives left. Shout out to Creatives, one of the all-time greats. Uh, but Ninu's kind of uh, filled the shoes okay-ish. I wouldn't say he hasn't done a good job because he has done a great job. He just hasn't been Creatives. Um, I, that's the only way I can put it. A great blaster, though. He 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 plays his blasters great. I think he's not as great as a hit scan as uh, Creatives was. Um, and I think that Mutu will get to play Shaolin and Cassie more now because Ninu won't have to play those as often. Um, he will if he needs to, though, and he can at a very high level. That's why he's on this team. Um, but he's been a solid rock for them. Phoenix. Mutu, Spunky, and Lazy are going to have to carry this team. Uh, more so, Phoenix. Every time Navi wins a lane, it's because Phoenix shows up big time for them. Um, and he flexes all over the place to different champions. He's going to have to do that again. Um, they are in the winner, the, the championship bracket, so they don't have to play through placements. Um, so that'll be you know, a sigh of relief to them. Uh, that They get couple extra days of rest but they'll be able to sit back and, and kind of gauge what's going on what champions are, are are taking priority at the land because it's always different than online most of the time or uh during the season uh, but two big champions for this squad are evie and willow they've had high 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 success rate with them even without creative because ninu can play those two champions just as well jack falls i don't think they lost a jack falls map all year but of course they did so that is not true uh, but it, very, very, very few times that they lose on Jack Falls. Don't keep same scenario. Um, those are their best two maps, in my opinion. They like those hit scan maps. They like those long, narrow three lane maps, and they keep it very tight on the rotations. Uh, Lazy and Spunky are in tandem with each other almost all the time. Lazy has been, has done a great job moving to the frontline role as well. A lot of DPS players move into frontline uh, over the past year and a half. So big ups to them. Can Nas Vincere win the world championship? Yes, I've got them third in my rankings. 
um, which I'll be releasing on Twitter shortly. Hey guys, that's it for the breakdown. I know that was a very long video, but hey, it's the world championship and that's just what it's gotta be, man. We've gotta get pretty in depth with these teams. Next video, we'll be breaking down the bracket. I'll also upload my predictions on a bracket. Um, to the website, we're also going to set up a challenge uh, or challenge, whatever you want to call it. We're going to set up a bracket uh, on the website. We'll tweet that link as well so that you can make your predictions and you can kind of do live bracket, keep up with that as well. And we'll put out some polls on Twitter. Don't forget to follow us on Twitter at Console Pro News. Subscribe to the channel, like the video, share the video, send it to all your friends. Let us know in the comments below who you think's got a chance of winning the world championship, which team you think is going to be the Cinderella, which team are underdogs, and which team could make a break for the championship very, very quickly with the lineups that they are going into these with. Lineups are subject to change, so not everything is set in stone. And as always, my name is Blue. Keep grinding, everyone.